Hello, this is Parnia Soleimani from George Mason's HAP 752 Advanced Health Information Systems, and today I will be giving a brief overview on univariate analysis. So let me give you some background information. Univariate analysis is the simplest form of statistical analysis. The prefix uni, as shown in red, is used to show that there is only one variable involved. It is essentially the descriptive analysis of a single variable used to describe characteristics of a sample. It's used to get a basic picture of what a sample looks like, rather than examining relationships and causes. Bivariate analysis, on the other hand, involves two variables and observes the relationships between them. In the table below, we examine univariate data pertaining to patient weight. Weight would be the variable of interest, and we can determine patterns associated with this variable by summarizing the data. If we were dealing with bivariate data, you would see another variable come into play, such as age. Therefore, the inclusion of only one variable would call for univariate analysis. Here's a quick overview on univariate analysis and its components. Depending on the type of variable you're dealing with, there are many different descriptive measures that can be conducted to summarize data. There are two different types of data we deal with, categorical and continuous. For categorical variables, you can use pi or bar charts to depict patterns and trends, or counts and count percent. When dealing with continuous variables, there are more options to choose from. Histograms and box plots can be used to provide graphical representations of the distribution of numerical data and to pick groups of numerical data through their quartiles. You can also summarize data by determining the minimum, maximum, median, mode, and average found within a data set. The range of data, variance, and standard deviation are additional measures that are used to quantify the amount of variation or dispersion present. Another method I will briefly touch on is skewness which is a measure of asymmetry, and this can be determined by examining the distribution and seeing whether symmetry exists by the left and right side of the center point. Of course, these are not the only measures used in univariate analysis, but they're the most common. There are many ways to conduct univariate analysis, such as frequency distribution, central tendency, and dispersion. Frequency distribution displays the frequency of different outcomes in a sample. In the table depicting patient gender, you see the percentage of both males and females among the patient population. This would be an example of frequency distribution. Central tendency focuses on a central value for a probability distribution. Here, we see a data set consisting of different patients and their ages. One way to determine this is to find the mean, which is the sum of all ages in the data set divided by the number of patients recorded. In this case, it would be 190 divided by 7, giving an average of 27. Therefore, the average patient age is 27 years old. We can also calculate the median by picking the most central value, which in this example would be 28 as well as the mode or number that appears the most frequent or often. You can see that the age of 22 appears twice, whereas all of the other ages appear only once. Therefore, the mode in this data set is 22. We can also determine the maximum and minimum values in the data set, which is the highest and lowest age respectively. The maximum age is 32, the minimum age is 22. All of these descriptive measures help summarize the data and provide a big picture of the sample. The third category we focus on is dispersion, which is a spread of values around a central tendency. This shows how stretched or thin a distribution is. Some common examples of dispersion measures are variance, standard deviation, and range. Now that we have reviewed various descriptive measures used in univariate analysis, let's examine the two specific types of variables used in these types of analyses. Categorical variables, also referred to as discrete variables, can take on one of a limited number of possible values. They typically involve the assignment of individuals in a data set to a specific group or category. Some examples consist of eye color, 
sizes, and diseases. Here are three different ways categorical variables can be summarized or depicted. The first on the far left groups t-shirt sizes and orders them in small, medium, large, and extra large categories. From there, the counts and percentages were determined for each size. A bar chart in the middle and a pie chart on the right are great visual representations which show the most commonly ordered size along with the least ordered size and everything in between. These charts are great ways to clearly show the differences between various categories. Unlike categorical variables, continuous variables can take on any value within a finite or infinite interval. These can further be broken down into interval and ratio variables. Interval variables are values without a true zero, whereas ratio variables are values with a true zero. For example, temperature would be an interval variable because there's not a true zero with temperature. Weight would be an example of a ratio variable because it has a true zero. Here are some ways to describe continuous variables in data. The first is an example we used earlier to summarize the recorded age of patients. Central tendency values, such as mean, median, mode, maximum, and minimum values, are commonly used to describe continuous variables. Histograms and skews can also be used to show trends among a data set by estimating the probability of distribution and measure of asymmetry of a continuous variable. The image in the middle shows the different ranges of exam grades, as well as the frequency of students falling within these ranges. The image on the far right shows two different types of skews, negative and positive. In the positive skew, the curve leans more towards the left, whereas in the negative, it leans towards the right, indicating whether the mean is less or more than the median. Now that we've touched on the different types of variables used in univariate analysis, let's summarize what we've learned. Univariate analysis is only one of many different ways to analyze data and involves data sets with only one variable. It essentially is the simplest form of analyzing data and is used to describe data rather than look at causes or relationships. Univariate analysis is useful for summarizing data and finding patterns and trends within a data set. I hope that this has been helpful in outlining the major components of univariate analysis and the various methods used when dealing with this type of analysis. Here's a list of references that can be used as additional resources. Thank you for watching.